again and uh, welcome to another scripting tutorial by Goopy D. Uh, this is the second of many. Um, today we're going to start by discussing local variables, instance variables, global variables, uh, how these are all used inside of your uh, programming, why and how you should use these, uh, and we'll just jump right into it. So first off, I'm going to teach you a little bit about uh, global variables. Uh, global variables are variables that can be accessed from anywhere at any time. Um, some examples of some global variables inside of the game already are defined inside of the title. In the title, you'll see data actors, data classes, etc., um, as well as game system, game variables. And the reason these are defined as global variables is, is that at any time, any scene or any class could make a change to one of these things for you automatically. Uh, well, not automatically, but to make a change to one of these so that they can affect other parts of the game um, so that you can get on through it. Um, what we're going to do is just going to show you um, basically how to define one. You can see this exactly already inside of the scene title, but we're going to go in and define our own. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assign one as global. So we're going to call it global. Now, one thing to note is, is that global, um, a global variable must be defined with a dollar sign or a at at. Um, so what, uh, generally speaking, through your scripts, you're almost always going to see them with a dollar sign. So to not get you confused, I'd recommend you just use the dollar sign. But um, basically, a global variable is a variable, again, that can be accessed anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a class called my class. Okay, we're not going to bother uh, setting up any sort of inheritance or anything like that. But we're going to define a couple initial variables. Um, and that's kind of what the initialize class or uh, method is. It's the, the method within the class that is run first um, as soon as that uh, is created. And so that you can set up that class and make it ready for use. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, define a couple of different variable types. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this one local because it's going to be a local variable. A local variable is a variable that is used within the method that is defined, but that it is not accessible from outside of that method. Um, the next type we're going to define is an instance variable. An instance variable is a variable that can be accessed within that instance of the class and modified within that instance of the class at any given point. Um, and it stays resident with that class until that class is destroyed or uh, so on. Um, the last one we're going to do is also an instance class, but it's just to show you that you can read globals in to your class and use them within your class. So we're going to go and call this one test and we're going to set that equal to global. Okay, So at any time you can define any number of variables all at once or you know, so on. So we can actually say A is a variable, B is a variable, C is a variable and we're going to set that to 0, 1, and 2. Um, the commas um, indicate that this um, will be separated and assigned to the next uh, variable. So here we've got A will become 0, B will become 1, and C will become 2. Okay. Um, the next thing here we're going to do is just define a quick little method, and this method is going to output this information for us. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to say local. So we want to, so we're going to ask the game to print the value, the current value of local. Local is again a local variable that was defined up here. However, because it's a local variable, as soon as it reaches this end, that variable is destroyed, and which means that it's not accessible. So this actually should cause the game to crash with a undefined method or um, value defined uh, local. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a instance uh, 
well actually we're just going to go ahead and create a local variable my class and we're going to set that equal to a version or an instance of my class so we add the dot new to say that it's not a copy of this class but it's actually a uh, it's an instance of it so it initializes it so with that my class we're going to tell it to say or run the method high which is what we defined up here um, running that method should produce the message um, or it should print the value of that in a message box however because again this variable local is destroyed at the end of this this should crash on us so let's just go ahead and run through that and there you can see undefined local variable or method local for the instance of my class. Now, if we go ahead and we say, all right, well, don't print that, but print the word or print the instance variable and also print the other instance variable, which was equal to our global, and print items C and A. So the commas denote just additional um, items that it should use. Um, the print class will take everything after it on that line and print it as one print command. Um, but if you're passing arguments to another um, method, then you need to actually put those in parentheses. But this particular one does not require that, so we're not going to bother putting those on it. So what we should get out of this when we run this is we should get the word instance then we should get the word global, then we should get the number two, and then we should get the number uh, the number zero. Okay, so let's just go ahead and run that. And let's see, undefined local variable or method C. Did we not define C? We did define C, but it doesn't like it. Interesting. Let's see. Maybe that's something new to RGSS2 um, that it doesn't like that. But we'll just go ahead and run that again. Oh, you know what? I know why it's not working. It's because these are local variables. I didn't define them with a sign on them. That's exactly why they won't work. So let's actually redefine those. Okay, and then over here we need to add the at symbols on them so that it knows that they are instance variables. We'll run that one more time. And there we go, instance global to zero. Now in RPG Maker um, XP, those would actually be on separate lines just because of the way the print command works, but in uh, VX it uh, puts them all in one line. Um, just subtle differences between the, uh, the way they work. So um, that's a little bit about variables. Um, one other thing to know is, is that um, when a variable is set, if you tried to ask my class to tell us the value of instance, then it passes this like a method to that. Now if we actually run this, it's going to crash on us, telling us that it doesn't know what instance is. It's an undefined method because we're accessing it from the outside, not the inside. It doesn't say it's a variable, it says it's a, just a method. So what we can do is we can make certain variables accessible to the outside. So I don't know if you've ever seen this across the top of other scripts, but you see attribute reader, attribute um, writer, and uh, or attribute accessors. Now these are basically a way of saying that this is going to create a method that allows you to write, read, or both read and write from a uh, variable from within that class. So we're going to go ahead and say instance. So what this does is this makes a method to say I want to modify and set the value for this variable, this instance variable. So if we actually run this with a print command on that, we should get the word instance because we can read it. Okay, so there you saw we got the instance, but at the same time, if I wanted to set that value to something else, if I tried to set it to my instance, and we ran that one more time, it's gonna actually give us an error. Why? 
Well, we only assigned it the ability to read. Okay, so we can't set it equal to something. So there's a solution to that. You can set the value of this to writer. Now, an attribute writer allows us to set that value. So if we run it one more time, we can see that it allows us to set that variable. Okay, so that's why we didn't get any error message. But at the same time, now if I ask it to read it and tell us what the value of it is, it's going to crash because it can't read from it now because you defined only the ability to write. So um, the other one is accessor. Accessor is the ability to read and write. So if we go ahead and run that one more time, we should actually get the my instance message. Okay, and uh, that pretty much concludes us uh, uh, regarding variables. Uh, we'll actually go a little bit more into this next time, but uh, just wanted to give you a brief overview. So again, leave comments, uh, suggestions for future episodes, and we'll get back to you. Thank you very much.